next to the string of fires in African-American churches in St. Landry Parish, Louisiana. Three historic churches destroyed in 10 days, and officials are calling them very suspicious. The FBI has now joined the investigation into the cause and the motive, but local pastors there say there are similarities among all three fires. Here's ABC's Zachary Keish. Tonight, a community rattled. Three church fires in just 10 days, all in the same Louisiana parish. The fires, being investigated as possible arson, have targeted African-American Baptist churches. Local fire marshals and federal authorities responding after the most recent inferno at Mount Pleasant Baptist Church. The flames tearing through the 100-year-old House of Worship. Tonight, the state's fire marshal telling ABC News they are classifying the St. Landry Parish fires as suspicious. There are absolutely suspicious elements that, that have led us to believe that this uh, is a crime. Officials say they've discovered several common patterns with two other church fires. After seeing St. Mary's Baptist burn to the ground, the pastor remains rooted in the support of faith and family. What's done in the dark will come to the light. Thank you all very much for coming out. Today is a very special day for us as we celebrate resilience and love and brotherhood of your fellow man. Today we are also celebrating the fact that we have the three pastors whose church were born in Opelousas, St. Landry Parish, and here to introduce them and tell you a little bit about what's going on is the mayor of Opelousas himself, the Honorable Julius Al Sindo. turning stone to bread and so we all must lend a helping hand. It's overnight, the son of a sheriff's deputy is under arrest, accused of starting those fires at three historically black churches in Louisiana. Steve Osinsami joins us now with the latest. Good morning, Steve. Good morning to you, Robin. The governor of Louisiana is making this announcement this morning with the ATF, the state fire marshal, and the FBI by his side. They are calling what happened despicable. Indeed, a pleasure to be here today with these three fine gentlemen that stand behind me and the national president of the Baptist Association. Let me first introduce the three gentlemen to my immediate left here. Pastor Kyle Sylvester. St. Mary Baptist Church in Port Barry, Louisiana. Pastor Gerald Toussaint, Mount Pleasant Baptist Church in Opelousas. And the Reverend Harry Richard, Greater Union Baptist Church in the city of Opelousas. U.S. attorney is confirming this morning that federal authorities have arrested a man for setting black churches on fire in Louisiana. He's accused of intentionally setting those fires at three black churches over 10 days. The first, on March 26, burned the St. Mary's Baptist Church to the ground. And within days, a second fire did the same to Greater Union Baptist just miles away, and then a third fire at Mount Pleasant Baptist. At one of the churches, we found burned Bibles and hymn books. The fire marshal immediately suspected they were looking for an arsonist who was targeting black churches. Again, our community was impacted by hideous crimes committed by a young man who all of these pastors here to my left has continued to give him prayers to him and his family. Because when things like this happens, there's something else going on. So we all need to continue to pray for that young man and pray for his family. But we have come together in the city of Opelousas and Port Barry, Louisiana, because we are a resilient community, a community that comes together when there's a time for need. And I'm sure each of these pastors here will echo those same words when that opportunity presents itself for them to speak here. But indeed, it is a pleasure for me to be here today, to be standing in this facility that opened only a couple of years ago, uh, I think on December 9th, 2017, and now is under the direction of Ms. Pamela Jr. I, I, she and I were speaking earlier about the history that both sections of this museum here has. And all of us in some way, shape, fashion, form, or manner has been impacted in some way or another by what has happened here over these last 300 years. But again, we've come this long way, but all of us still have a long ways to go. Mm -hmm. 
And again, here to my left, these three gentlemen, they definitely need to be recognized and applauded for their efforts of leaving their congregation, but also the members who have played such an integral part for them to get where they are today. One of, the, one of my good friends, I reached out to him and he came here, to, Brother Ronald Milborn. He's here today from Greater Union. So you have that community, you have that family that is here supporting in the city of Opelousas. And I can tell you as the representative and the mayor of the great city of Opelousas, we have done each and every day try to do the best that we can mm -hmm. to give hope, give helping hands mm -hmm. and support. Because I, not being part of those congregations, the impact of these 100 plus year old churches, the nostalgicness and the history that was within each of these churches, it's not going to be long forgotten, but remembered mm. until the Lord calls upon each of us mm. at the time all this took place. So without further ado, I'm sure Brother Simbe will want each of these pastors to go ahead and speak. Absolutely. And I'll let him go ahead and say his name while he's up here. But again, as I stand here today being supportive of you today, but all the times that you've called upon us and we came together, I ask that as we go forward, if there's anything that I, as the mayor of the city of Opelousas, can do for each of you, feel free to reach out and you will touch someone. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Simeon. Uh, thank you, Mississippi. Uh, Jackson, Mississippi, for open, opening up your doors uh, for us coming here today. Um, all I can say, it's been a journey uh, for myself. And um, it's amazing how God uses that which we call negative and allows it to be used to show for that he really exists mm. and it shows forth his love to show us that really and truthfully love reaches beyond our differences mm. um, we've been blessed as a church um, from all 50 states 40 plus countries all over our community and you know God is really showing us really and truthfully how he wants us to be mm. with one another and we're, we should be about each other and about our fellow man and taking care of one another. So all I can say for myself and on behalf of the congregation of St. Mary Missionary Baptist Church that we thank you all. Uh, we thank the mayor. We thank all the individuals who have just gone above and beyond. And just recently, you know, the Diocese are, uh, of Lafayette blessed us as well uh, with a monetary donation. So we just thank God for just showing forth his power, his glory, and his might in the midst of this. And um, even though um, it was tragic when it happened, God allowed a negative to bring about a positive. So I just want to thank each one of you once again, and I just thank God for his many blessings. Appreciate you. Hi, I'm Reverend Toussaint, Gerald Toussaint from Mount Pleasant Baptist Church, which was 147 years old after it burned. We thank God for all of those, these are the, our mayor and all of those mm -hmm. he invited us here to the yeah. state of Mississippi, yeah. to Jackson, and we thank God for all of those who have helped us mm -hmm. because it, it, it would be much darker mm -hmm. if we didn't have, if we had to rely on just the insurance money. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't be where we are today, but we thank God that God says, sends us help. Mm -hmm. That, uh, you know, there's a gospel song that says, uh, must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? No, there's a cross for everyone, and I know there's a cross for me. And, and this, this cross has been put on our shoulders to carry. But I'm not, I'm not ashamed to carry this cross because I know that everything's going to come out better. All things work together for the good. Of they are called by God for a purpose, and God has chosen us for a purpose, and we have to fulfill that purpose. I wish somebody quit calling me, but we, we uh, uh, for that purpose. But I thank God for all of the states, all of the people that came to help us to rebuild our, our congregation and our churches. It's not easy to keep on and holding on to the congregation without their building. Mm -hmm. But now that we've had all the help, we're going to put up something that will glorify God. Mm -hmm. And I thank God for the opportunity to be used to lead these people back into their congregation. God bless you. Yeah. May God forever keep you as I help. My name is Pastor Harry Reshort from the Greater Union Missionary Baptist Church mm -hmm. from Opelousa, Louisiana. Yes, sir. 
it's my pleasure and honor to be here today to uh, fellowship with these brothers and the mayor and uh, all of my brothers and sisters here in Mississippi. We are, we are more than happy for the way that God has blessed us. Uh, I believe that this uh, activity or these times have brought us closer together. Mm -hmm. And I think that God is using this activity, this moment in time to gather this whole nation. Mm -hmm. We're so grateful for what uh, the nation has done for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can't say thank you enough. Mm -hmm. But the, the fires of the church are out. But our lives are still burning. Yes, yes. Mm. And we're asking everyone to pray for us mm. that God will keep us together and make us stronger. Yeah. I thank you all for all that y'all have given and what y'all will give. Mm. God bless y'all and may it keep you. Amen. 17 years ago, we, we uh, started a journey to make Louisiana and Mississippi communicate. And thus our coalition was born. And of those, the 10 of the last 17 years, our president and executive director has been the Honorable W.T. Winfield of Baton Rouge. Another founding member is in the audience, Ms. Alice Tisdale, our distinguished colleague from across the river. But at this time, we'd like Mr. Winfield to <laughs> say a few words. Yes, we are happy to have had a coalition between Louisiana and Mississippi where we come together and try to network to bring leaders and and concerns of people all across both states together. And we use this opportunity of the football game of Jackson University versus Southern University as an event where we would gather. And we're just so honored today to have with us the national president, Dr. Young, from Jackson, Mississippi, here with us. And we just thank you. Thank you for all the pastors. God bless you. And I'm sure all of you have heard of uh, Muhammad Ali. I'm sure you've heard of Michael Jordan, Bill Russell, Will yeah. Chamberlain. Yeah. Those are some dynamic people. Yeah, man. But anytime you can be the first national president elected in 40 years of a national Baptist black group, you oh, are a bad yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Young. I am so delighted and so privileged to be here, and particularly to be here with these persons who have uh, demonstrated in the real sense what it means to be faithful to God and to his purpose. For those of us who are committed to his purpose, we have the authority to count on his presence. And so I am delighted for that reason. Secondly, uh, the National Baptist Convention through the Louisiana Baptist Convention right. uh, has been involved in trying to make sure that we could do what we could do in order to help these persons. And what we have done is no indication of what we shall do to make sure that they are whole. Yes. I, I say emphatically, without any question, that what is most applicable in this case, I believe, is what happened to Joseph. Mm -hmm. Joseph brothers did him a misdeed. He ended up in prison. Uh, he ended up in Potiphar's house. Uh, he ended up in a pit, in a hole. Yes. I mean, this guy went through a whole lot. But what it discovered was, was that ultimately, everything that he went through was ultimately for him to arrive at his destiny. Yes. It was not God's intention for him to stay in the pit. It wasn't yeah. his intention for him to stay in prison. It wasn't his intention for him to even stay in Potiphar's house. All right. His intent was to make sure that this fellow would become the secretary of agriculture for Egypt. So he had to go through a whole lot to get there. And I believe that what he said to his brothers essentially is applicable here. Man meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Any questions you'd like to open the floor? 